but Havlicek steals it. Havlicek stole the ball. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Hello, I'm Chris Fowler for Sports Century. While his pit crew would frantically signal for him to slow down because he had the race won, Wild Bill Vukovic would be pushing for more speed. He wanted not just victories, but records too. His style was to charge, and it drove him to two straight Indy 500 triumphs. It also led to his death while trying for a third. Bill Vukovic was one of the legendary characters in the history of the Indianapolis 500. And there's no question that in the first half of the 50s, there was basically, he was far and away the man. Some people say he was Indy's greatest driver. I say that he was, and I'm very proud of that fact. I think Bill Vukovic uh, was probably the greatest actual driver we've ever known. I mean, in terms of his skill and his ability and his determination. Bill Vukovic was often referred to as the giant of midgets. He was a midget racer and he was really quick racing midgets. He loved doing it. And he was modest about his achievements, but he was very focused on his goals. He wanted to lead a race, he wanted to win a race. He won the races by dead of a heavy foot and a, a clear eye and an ability to drive these things and knowing when to do this and when to do that. Billy Vukovic was a unique individual. He had the ability to understand his car, work on his car, and anybody that ran against him knew they were going to run second. He was the Babe Ruth of automobile racing. He had a great determination once he was on the racetrack to win and to get to the front and to pass the car in front of him. And he was absolutely just... They take wheels off of trucks every day and sweat. I mean, just sweat and work day after day after day. Bill Vukovic was fearless at the wheel of a car. He depended entirely on the car doing what it's supposed to do and drove it accordingly. He never really babied a racing car. He had no fear of, of any situation or any person and apparently was not intimidated by the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. When you're racing against great drivers like that and, and you see them underneath you and you realize that, okay, that's Bill Vukovic, it's Dale Earnhardt, and in my case, that's Sleepy Trip and the mid, great midget driver, they have you half beat already because it's like in the back of your mind, you're going, oh man, you know what, I've got to really stay in front of this guy. And sometimes they don't have to do a thing to you, but it forces you to make the error. You do it to yourself. My father, um, I guarantee you, had to be such an intimidating person because he wouldn't let anybody know what was inside of him. Most people who choose auto racing as a career have an ego. And Bill Vukovic had no visible ego. One sports writer, David Coleman, referred to Bill Vukovic as the Hamlet of the Half Mile. And that image conjures up a, a brooding, enigmatic uh, individual. Um, he was taciturn, he wasn't uh, the friendliest. It's almost as though he had no time for that. He wasn't a backslapper, he wasn't one of the guys. He was the guy you better, better not see in your rearview mirror. There was a great mystique about Vukovic. He was like this mystery character because he had this name, but, but people didn't know anything about him because he didn't talk to anybody. My dad was pretty determined. They tell me that when someone went with him, he would talk with them a little bit. And the closer they got the racetrack, the quieter he would get. Then after the races, Uncle Billy was not one that stayed there very long. He'd get the race car loaded and then he was gone. 
So they didn't really know him, and they thought he was arrogant. He didn't take the time to talk to them. In actuality, you know, he, he had a sense of humor, but his sense of humor was, was uh, always really shown to his intimates, to his really close friends. I've had several people say that in the garage, I mean, he'd be cutting up and, and uh, you know, carrying on and joking. If somebody came in that he didn't know, he'd clam up. Bill, when he was with people he was familiar with, was, was a very outspoken and, and fun guy to be around and a great needler. He was a lot of fun, and he could tell a lot of jokes, too. When we got to the racetrack, it was totally a different thing. It was all racing. In the mid-1940s, Bill Vukovic was a giant in one class of auto racing, the midget circuit. Then in 1953 and 54, he stepped up in size, speed, and fame, winning back-to-back -back Indianapolis 500s. He won race after race after race, and he developed into such a driver that that's when he moved on to Indianapolis. People say sometimes, you know, uh, gosh, he came from the Bush Leagues and, and went to the top, but he was the top of the Bush Leagues. And when he went to IndyCars, uh, he went right into the middle echelon and quickly made it, uh, made it right to the top. When he burst on the scene at Indianapolis, he, he essentially dominated. He led over 400 laps in the, in the amount of time that he was there, which was from 51 to 55, which is an incredible dominance. And he did it so quickly uh, where other great drivers, it takes them a while to get used to the place. There have been other good drivers since Billy's time, A.J. Foyd, Parnelli Jones, a lot of others. But it took them quite a few years to, the, to compile their wins. Bill could have done this four years in a row. No driver's ever dominated the race as, as he has. If his career continued on as it had at Indy, I mean, it just was conceivable that uh, he would have been unbeatable there. Everybody felt that it was a foregone conclusion that Bill Vukovic, as long as he was in the Indy 500, he would keep on winning. He was like a skyrocket. He, he just came from nowhere, and all of a sudden, he, he was on the highest of high plateaus. Bill Vukovic was on top of the world, and, uh, you know, really little did he know what was around the corner for him. In those days, people used to talk about the Speedway jinx. The idea was that you, no matter how good you were, you couldn't win three in a row. In racing, you never knew. Vuki was only involved in IndyCars for five years. In hindsight, it was a little too long. Born in Alameda, California in December of 1918, Bill Vukovic grew up in the San Joaquin Valley, one of the nation's richest farming areas. But Rich did not describe his circumstances. He was the son of um, immigrants. They were paupers. They were, uh, I think, grape farmers. He had very limited education and certainly was not raised with, with airs and graces. They had a uh, large family, five sisters, three brothers, and uh, just like all America, they were uh, poor because of the, the Depression. It was a tough life for them. My grandmother did not speak English. They all had to work. The boys, of course, had to do twice as much, and if my grandfather did not think they were doing enough, he would take it upon himself to make sure that they did more. Grandpa would hit them. He was a very, very, very demanding man. In those days, you know, the man ruled the house no matter what you said or what you thought. Vukovic and his seven siblings faced deprivations greater than poverty. On Bill's 14th birthday, his father committed suicide. My grandfather did take his own life by shooting himself. He didn't know how to really cope with everything. When he lost everything in the Depression, the house burned, they lost everything then. They were basically destitute, and my grandfather couldn't take it. He was a very proud man. 
and to lose it all, it was very hard.